interesting has been the Tanzanian Serengeti National Park where people tuned in to, to watch a, a, a live cast from here. And also a mountain hut in the Tatra Mountains in southern Poland. So it keeps us entertained, those of us who uh, are running the concerts. But of course, at the end of the day, it's really the musicians. And today we have a fascinating program, uh, some very interesting pieces, including by two composers who are, are here, uh, Julian Jacobson, who will be playing, and Frederick Weiner, who is sat uh, uh, behind. So I think, uh, Rob, it's almost time to go live in about 15 seconds. And then I'll talk to the audience, and then we'll welcome the two musicians. So thank you for coming. It's uh, good to see you. We have a clock. Thank you. So it's time now to welcome our online audience to the piano recital here at St. Mary's Perivale in West London. Today we have a very special recital because it's not one pianist but two. We have the duo of Julian Jacobson and Mariko Brown. Julian and Mariko have played here several times. And in fact, Julian played for us only three weeks ago in the Beethoven uh, Piano Sonata Festival. Uh, so uh, you can look at their bios and their programs on our website, but just for the convenience of the online viewers, I'll just read out the program. We're going to begin with Mozart, the sonata in C for the piano duo, and then a work called Riffs on Seven by Frederick Weiner, a composer who is in the audience with us here today, and then Wagner's Good Friday Music from Parsifal, and then Julian Jacobson's own uh, composition, Palm Court Waltz. And finally, uh, the Sonata for Four Hands by Poulong. Now, our musicians are going to introduce most of these pieces, so I will leave it up to them. And so please now let us all welcome Julian and Mariko.
give any introduction. No words could possibly improve on it. Uh, and after that glorious piece, it was rather difficult being a composer, as two of us here are today, um, in the face of such perfection. But it's my great pleasure to invite Frederick Weiner to introduce this piece that we will now play. It's a pretty hard act to follow, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I suppose all I'll say is that with a title like Riffs on Seven, it might be surprising to hear it holds a lot of significance for me because the last time I heard it was March last year, exactly one week before our first lockdown. So it's only fitting, really, that this is the first piece of live music I've heard since then as well. Um, and another reason it's so significant is because it's meant I've got to meet these wonderful musicians here. This is the first time we've met in person, but we've been speaking over email for quite a while now. Um, about the music itself, I wrote a, so there are a few technical nuggets in the program notes, if you want to have a look at those. Otherwise, the main thing to know is that it's, it's a bit of fun. It shows off the performers pretty well, I think. Um, yeah, and I really hope you enjoy. It's lovely to see you. It's lovely to be here. Thank you.
in fact, I don't know that much about Parsifal. And uh, extraordinarily enough, our distinguished page turner, Mr. Philip Gillen, knows rather a lot about it. So I'm inviting him to introduce it. Um, well, uh, Parsifal is about five and a half hours long. Uh, which I use the. Um, So um, Parsifal is, a, is a, a, a rather long story, and I, I can't really fill you in on all of it, but um, Parsifal is uh, the same character as the Arthurian knight Sir Percival. And um, the story of the opera is, is the famous episode of the, uh, the Wounded King, or the Fisher King, from the Arthurian romances. This version is taken from um, uh, uh, an early 13th century uh, German source. Um, so, um, the, the wounded king is Amphotas, and his job really is to look after the, the land where the grail and the, the holy relics of the crucifixion are kept. And he falls by the wayside and ends up getting wounded by a spear. Uh, it's the same spear, supposedly, that pierced the side of Christ during the crucifixion. Um, and uh, to cut a rather long story short, um, the remedy is sympathetic magic, the idea that the um, instrument that uh, caused the wound can heal it. Um, and at this point in the opera, um, Parsifal has succeeded in a quest to acquire the spear, which has been lost um, to, a, to an evil sorcerer. And uh, so he's, he, there's a point of sort of contemplation where he's in, in nature. There's a lovely rolling stream, and he feels a sort of strange tingle and imminence and sense of, of expectation all around him and asks a friend and the friend says that is uh, good friday magic so that's the real name of this music it's um how is it is it in the german car car freitags zauber so and uh for this uh, wagner's right near the end of his life at the height of his sophistication as a composer and he produces the probably some of the most sophisticated gorgeously polyphonic chromatic harmony that had ever been written up to that point um a an absolutely gorgeous piece of music and i hope you enjoy it i just want to say a word about this arrangement which is completely out of print and I don't know if you can see it, it's pretty much falling to pieces. It probably dates from the 1890s, and it's transcribed by Engelbert Humperdinck, not the man that sang Please Release Me, Let Me Go, <laughs> but the composer of Hansel and Gretel, who was in fact Wagner's assistant on Parsifal, and even wrote some of the little links and helped him with the orchestration and was assisting in the first performance. So he did a couple of transcriptions from Parsifal, and I found this many, many years ago in Blackwell's second-hand music shop in Oxford, and it's accompanied me all my life. It's an absolutely gorgeous transcription. For some reason, it's completely out of print, so we're delighted to be bringing it to you this afternoon.
mustn't forget the microphone this time. So, back in a very different field, this is my own Palm Court Waltz, which I wrote in 2013, specifically as a tribute to the wonderful Sir Richard Rodney Bennett, the, the most kind of Renaissance musician I've ever met in my life. Uh, started off as, as a real modernist, start, uh, studying with Boulez. Very early on in the 70s, I turned pages for him, doing a furious program of what used to be called avant-garde music. A lot of it smuggled from the Soviet Union in manuscript. Uh, he was playing with Susan Bradshaw. And then he always had a fantastic gift for improvising, for jazz. He was working as a jazz pianist and then as a very serious composer with a wonderful opera that should be done, really should be revived, uh, The House of Usher. And um, is that right? Yes. And so I got to know him quite well, and I was very saddened by his quite sudden death. He'd given an absolutely brilliant concert, at the opening concert of the London Jazz Festival in December, November 2012. And he was in sparkling form. He was singing, he was duetting, he was playing, he was improvising. And he lived in New York and he got sick there. And very sad, he just passed away on Christmas Eve 2012. So I thought I wanted to write a tribute to him. And the result was, uh, in, in his light music idiom, uh, this palm court waltz. And if you know the great waltz from the Orient Express, you may hear it being quoted.
you. And finally, the delightful sonata by Francis Poulenc for Four Hands from 1918. He was a very young man. And actually, traditionally, this has been thought of as a sort of Parisian romp. But actually, we think it's something not quite the same as that. It was written just at the end of the war, and the marking is modere, moderato, so we take it slower than you might sometimes hear it. And actually, at least the first movement, I think, is rather a little bit of a cry of despair, and not just the sort of Parisian hijinks that we always think it is. But it certainly ends in very high spirits. <laughs> We're very in each other's way in this, so I take off my jacket, and Mariko just reminded me.
Is it on now? Wow, amazing. I've never done karaoke, karaoke before. Um, I'm not going to start now, actually. Um, it's, it's lovely to see you all. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having us. It's been an absolute treat um, to play for you. And um, every single piece, we'd love to play again, um, to enjoy it again. And um, it's been great to meet Fred. So thank you so much for your piece. Um, oh yes, we're at the end of the concert, and <laughs> I'm here to announce the um, encore. Um, also, hello and uh, thank you to friends and family at home, or watching online. Um, so we've got um, Debussy, um, uh, the on bateau from Petite Suite, um, composed in 1889, just to finish off. Um, thanks very much. Anything. Do I need to press anything on here? Thank you. 
Opera, performed so wonderfully by Julian and Marika. Thank you very much indeed for that and for the fascinating, informative introductions too. Uh, thank you to Philip Gibbon, who introduced the Wagner and turned pages and is a musician in his own right. And he reminded me that he also had played here about five years ago. Thank you too for the two composers who are in our audience today, Frederick and Julian. I think this must be a first for St. Mary's Perivale to have two composers in our audience. Imagine what it would be like if we could have Chopin or Beethoven. <laughs> it's fantastic, but thank you very much. Uh, um, now, what else to say? Uh, I think also I would like to thank Sherry White, my colleague Sherry White, and also Rob Jenkins for doing the live streaming up there in the studio. Thank you, of course, to all of you watching online, including those of you in Canada and Cyprus who have been commenting throughout the, throughout the concert. Uh, so I think uh, I should just remind us all that the next concert here is this Thursday at 3 o'clock, when it is the Cygnus Piano Trio playing Beethoven and Schumann. So do tune in again then. And for the audience here, please come if you would like to. So now it's time to say farewell to the online audience and thank you very much for watching. And for the audience here, uh, it would be very much appreciated if you've enjoyed it, if you could please make a donation, and I should have reminded it in the online as well. There's a PayPal facility uh, on our website, or the yellow envelopes, or the machine that Sherry has at the back there. So three different ways of paying, if you would, because we pay all our musicians, I'm not sure about the composers, but <laughs> certainly, certainly the, the musicians who have played today. Um, what else? At the back, Julian and I think Marika, they have some...